Hi, I'm Jorge Mitsunaga, and we are here at the 33rd Annual GLAAD Media Awards here in New York. Tonight we are celebrating and honoring LGBTQ plus inclusivity and representation in the media. So stick around with me. We'll be talking to some of tonight's biggest guests and some honorees, so stay tuned. You are an honoree tonight. I'm sure you've been asked that multiple times, but tell me, what is the emotion that you are going through right now? Uh, I'm overwhelmed. I mean, I, I, I can't even point to one emotion because I've been feeling all of them. I've been here since, I grew up here. I grew up at this organization. I learned the power of visibility here. I learned how I could be useful here. Um, I received the GLAD, the GLAD Award for my so-called life when I was 20. I was the youngest board member of the organization two years later. I worked here um, as the national spokesperson and the director of entertainment partnerships where I worked and advocated for more people of color and more trans people on, on in media and so knowing what they consider is incredibly overwhelming to me that they chose me. How important it is for people to stay engaged, stay informed, specifically within the LGBTQ plus community? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, just as a person, uh, first of all, as a person of color and a queer person of color, uh, we know what it's like to be oppressed. Um, I've been oppressed pretty much against the system all my life. Um, and also as someone who's been a human rights activist, um, it's important for me to be on the forefront of all of this and to help ensure that, you know, we're fighting for those around us. I mean, you know, my mom, I have a mom, like a woman in my life. There are other people out here um, who will be suffering from what's going on with Scoutus right now. And it's, if, it, if it starts there, um, Scoutus making decisions like that against our bodies, then what's going to be next? You've seen Obviously, in addition to the breaking news that we experienced about Roe v. Wade, as well as attacks that maybe we've seen within the trans community, like attacks on Leah Thomas, what do you think is at stake if members within our community remain silent? I mean, they're, they're going to come for you, right? I mean, someone's going to come for you and, be, and, and share information that could potentially make you oppressed. And it's no different than we've been experiencing in our society for the past... 400 years here in America, right. but I mean, just step foot out of any country and you can see oppression can happen to anyone. Right. Um, so if we don't stick together, if we don't stand up, then we're gonna have more problems. Okay, let's just get to the nitty gritty. You had a very explosive, amazing season this past season. Yes. People were rooting for you, people were against you. What can you tell us about your thoughts about this season and what can we expect going forward for the next season? Well, we still have two more episodes of the reunion, okay. so it even gets crazier. Um, and moving forward, I think it's going to be a little rough. There's a lot of things to repair because there's definitely no resolve by the end of the reunion. But we're all strong women and um, I think we could get through anything. I think one of the most contentious points of this season is that with you, you're a straight shooter. You call, yes. you call it like it is. There's no double standard. It is what it is. Why do you think that maybe some cast members wrestle with that? I think everybody's not comfortable in their own skin and people don't like to say the truth and they have embarrassment or shame about something and they're not comfortable putting it all out there. And when someone else puts it all out there, like myself, it's intimidating or something like that and I really can't understand that because I'm comfortable in my own skin so I think that's the issue. I was devastated and especially growing up with a woman like Marge Singer who was all about uh, women empowerment. I think this is we all have to band together men and women and because this is an attack on women it's about pro-choice and no one should be able to tell us what we can do with our bodies and I think this is just it starts here and then, and then what's next? It's going to be the LGBTQ plus community. It's going to be people of color. So we all have to band together and really not let this happen. It's totally under attack and it's shocking because it feels like we're taking a giant step in the opposite direction while the world is actually moving forward. We have so many television series, uh, films representing uh, gender non-conforming people, trans people, non-binary people, queer people, and people of color, and people that fit within all of the rainbows. How did it feel, given the fact that we are at the GLAAD Awards, and you being such supportive parents? Just talk to us about that. You know, so, GLAAD obviously supports the LGBTQ through yeah. the media, yeah. and the media shapes how everyone perceives everything yeah. in this world, so, for us, you know, to have that moment where 
in real life, we are dealing with these very real issues yeah. that are about the LGBTQ community. And then for that to be able to be televised and for us to be able to work with GLAD and support GLAD is just like this perfect trifecta to help bring equality and help people, you know, understand the support that is needed. I have to bring it up, the no broke dick Thank moment. You so much. Thank you so much. Iconic. Did you ever think that moment would go extremely viral? No. Like, what did you think? What was going through your mind? And then when you saw Dawn's face and Allison's face, just bring us back to that moment. So it was 1 a.m. Central Time. So I didn't even think anybody was watching anymore because it was technically midnight in Mountain. So I thought they were just doing something else. And then he asked me what my New Year's resolution was. I was like, I don't really have one. And I was like, no, I do have one. It's no more broke dick. And so I was talking to a friend of mine. It's like, and that's a bit that I just had for a while, but you never know when you're going to be called to start a ministry. And that day, I felt like this is when I need to share my truth. But the thing that was so crazy is everybody got so mad. But the next thing that I so, oh listen, so many broke men had to borrow their their friend's phone to tweet at me from an account that they barely used that they were mad that I said no more broke dick. But in that moment, I was just like, ah, eh, nobody heard it, nobody saw it. And then my friend who was with me, she was like, oh, you're, they wrote a Vulture article. And I was like, what? What do you mean? All I said, I didn't, I didn't know. It was all, a moment. It was a moment. I had no clue. I just like, he asked me for a New Year's resolution and I couldn't think of one. And I was like, but what is my goal every year? But the energy is always so great here. And it's, it's really fun to be with other LGBTQIA plus um, colleagues and allies in the media and journalist community, especially like right now is a very critical time for representation. Um, and it's just it's really uh, quite an event to be all here together. Uh, there's not really competition. Everyone's kind of doing their own thing in their own way um, in, in the effort of you know, visibility and for representation storytelling. Where do you see the future for queer spaces, specifically trans spaces, within the media or entertainment industry? Like, how do you see that going forward? I see it going forward with strength. I see it going forward with resilience. We are such a strong body of people. The things that we have overcome are astonishing. So I know that we rest and stand on those roots. So I know that it's only going to get even broader with the representation. And I'm honored to be amongst my peers and you know we're all in this together so I'm, I'm happy for the future and I see it now we're breaking down all of those barriers of prejudices and biases and so it's in that teaching that we're able to inspire our youth to do the same.